So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the uh, channel. That really helps me out. Thank you very much. Okay, so we continue with our tutorial. So, so far what we had was the page is not reloading. And the reason is simple, there's, a, there's an error in here. So if we go to our console and check, you find that the data is being sent back as required. So no problems there. But the edit description input is undefined. So if I go back to my products.php, I will see that uh, this is the one being talked about. This is inside the show edit product function. So that thing right here, just like this is missing and we need to be able to use it there. So it's not a big deal because we've put it inside an if statement. So if I do a find like that, I will see it's right here. So just like we moved this thing here, we just need to move this up there and uh, we are home and dry. That's it. Okay, so let's give it one more last shot and see how well it refreshes. So let's put number 14. Let's remove that to there and hit save. Okay, so now as you can see, everything refreshes as planned. Okay, so this is well and good. Now, just for the editing of our images again. <coughs> Excuse me here. Okay. Editing of our images. So what we can do in order to, um, oh, we don't want to, uh, an alternative here is that what we can do is we can put some hidden fields. I'm sure somebody has thought of that. Some hidden fields where we put the links of, uh, we put the links of our images uh, here so that we can transfer the data along with uh, the information here. We can transfer the image uh, links as well. But the problem with that is that for images, we need to upload the images, the info that we've sent. Okay, I'm like, now if, if the images are already on the server, then that creates a problem because now we need to find out whether those images are the same old images or the image has changed and then we need to upload it. So the best way is just not to bother with this, just uh, check for those that actually have the images and then just upload those. Okay. Now, the only challenge to this is if we go to our product class here and we go to edit here. Now, when saving, we need to know whether to include the images uh, columns in this saving here. So it would be nice if we could know which of the columns actually uh, were added, which of the images columns were added, and then we can edit those. So there's a thing we can do to kind of cheat. So what I will do is I'll create a variable called images, okay? Images underscore string. So this is just be a string here. So I'll just activate it there. So there's an images string there. So what we will do with this images string is to put it at the very end of the, the whole thing here. So we have prize and then I'll just put images there like so, images string. So if we do add the, if we don't add anything the way it is now, this will just be an empty space and it won't bother our query at all. But if we do add some images, then it will contain this data, which is kind of like this. And it will add it to there. So it will just put a comma and then add some more images there, some more items there. So let's see how we can go about doing that. So the first thing we need to do is to be able to check which images were uploaded. So, <clears throat> excuse me. And we also have to be able to verify this data over here because we actually did not. But because we already have the, the verification process right here, I'll just copy this. And matter of fact, in fact, let me just copy that for a second and put it here. 
-hmm. Okay, so the data is set and then we check if any of it is wrong and then we assign that to an error. So well and good. And then for the error to work, we need to have this if statement there so that we don't save if there's actually an error. So I'll come down here, paste that, and come down here, close that like this, push everything internal, and that's it. So if this is not set or it's not empty, or if it is empty, then uh, we get to do that. But in the middle here, we have all this. So it seems we actually do need this part as well, creating a folder if it doesn't exist and checking for files. So let's just copy all this as well and put it right in the middle there. Smack in the middle. Now, these are places where you could create a function because this is repeated code exactly the same. So you could create a function and then call it at this point that will reduce the amount of code. But I'm just doing it this way because there are times you may want to change a few things depending on what happens on the edit or what happens on the beginning of creating that product. So let's leave it at this for now. And so all these are empty here, but then they won't be empty anymore if we, uh, we reach here. So at this point, what I want is to be able to create uh, to create this image string right here. Where is this image string right there? Now the string is supposed to create something like this, like description is equal to description. So let me copy that for a second and let's bring it here because this is where we actually know that we've added one image at least. So I will do this. I'll say image string is equal to this. Now, the thing is the way it's supposed to work is I have to put, let me put this in, I have to put a comma there at the beginning. It should be something like this. So the reason I'm putting a comma is because where I'm putting it here, it does require a comma uh, like that. So now the description is the key, is the key or the column name. So we're just going to get that from the key itself. So I'll copy that key over there. I'll close this and do that. And of course I will delete the description because that was the key. And then add to that. So key is equal to. Now at the end here, we will get the same key because as you can see description here, there was also description here. So I'll get the same key and put it here just after the full colon there, like this. And so at the end, I don't need any string there, like that. Okay, and that should uh, work because now we're going to add those images to the list as well after moving them or uploading them here. So this is why I repeated this code because I did change something here and I didn't want it to be finicky, so I just copied it over again. So I think uh, everything else should work fine at this point. So let's give it a try and see if we are able to edit our images. So refresh. Now I want to change the very first image here. So I will click and click browse for the first image. And so let's change the very first image. And let's hit save. Everything else remains the same. Okay, so now I have a problem. So let me go back to console.log. Now I did put back my uh, console.log. Um, <coughs> I did put back the console.log in the handle result there because I think it helps to keep it there for a while until you are satisfied. That way I get to see things in the console. So the result here says undefined variable files. Okay, so files is not defined. 
So let's go back to our class on line 133. So class, that's probably a mistake. Oh, that's because we didn't capture it here. So what I will do is just do that, files. And yeah, that should sort our problem out. Uh -huh. Okay, what else? Uh, invalid argument for for each. Okay, that's part of the syntax error, parse error. Okay, so it seems everything else is pretty standard. So let me click save again. Let's see what errors we have this time. So there's a warning here. It says uh, execute invalid parameter number. Okay. The number of bound variables does not match the tokens. Okay. So what it is telling me is that um, the number of items I bound in here is not equal to the number of items. Uh, in other words, the array that I supplied here has more items than are required. Okay, so why is that? So let me see first of all. So here everything else was fine. So it means up to this point, things were working fine. So it means these are not the problem. So the problem is obviously much later. Okay, so let me see how much more we have actually added. So I'm sure it's right here where we added this thing here, but maybe this did not uh, go through. Okay, so to sort this problem out uh, will not be difficult. What we will do is just, uh, let's do show array like this. And also let's do show uh, SQL. So I will do here, I will move this, these things here so that I show this after the SQL. So first of all, let me show the query and then let me show the array. That way we can do a comparison, right? So simple and straightforward, I will hit save and come back here and let's see what we have. Okay, so we have a query here, update products, set, uh, everything here. And then finally we get where it says image is equal to image. So that is good, which means our image was added to the query. So that's nice. But where is the problem? The problem is that it has added all these image one, two, three, four, which are empty. So that becomes a problem. Okay. Which is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, which is uh, quite dangerous because we're going to replace images that we didn't want to replace. So doing this is wrong. So instead of all that, let's remove all that. So just make sure that you're removing this from the function edit, right? So let's remove all that, completely pointless, because if we do need it, it's going to be added right here. Okay, so pretty good. Let's try again. So I'll hit save this time. Let's come back here. Okay, so product uh, yeah it looks like everything went well this time so let me come down here and remove this show and tell and let's try one more time and see if the thing will disappear and it does disappear so that's good and as you can see the image has changed here pretty good if I click uh, edit you see that uh, other images uh, still exist but uh, this one, uh, yeah, so now we see that stretching there, which is the, the normal uh, thing caused by flex. So let's come back here for a second. So you can leave this console.log for us while we're still debugging things, but you can remove it in the end. Okay, so let's come back up here where we were uh, dealing with the images and let's give these images a specific height. So I will say the height will be, let me just put 30 pic or 50 pixels here. And let me do the same here, 50 pixels. 
refresh click again okay so 50 uh, not very good let's try something like 80 yeah okay it's too stretched but uh, later on we're going to add an image cropper that way we're going to be cropping the images so they fit much better than this okay so i'll see you in the next video where we finally add our products to the front page. I'll see you then.